spaghetti has a noodle soup problem. You could have the best soup base in the world, but if you opted for that bag of spaghetti in the very back of your cupboard, maybe it'll be okay, but there'll always be something a little off about it. Like that it doesn't quite come together. That almost feels like two separate things in the same bowl. In short, it just won't be very rue. Now, rue is a word that we don't really seem to have in English for whatever reason. The characters literally mean enter flavor, and it refers to the quality of flavor absorptiveness. A good example might be something like a chicken parm sandwich. You deep fry the thing, not for crispy related purposes, but so that the flavor of the tomato sauce can really enter that breading. Rue is why braised root vegetables are the best part of braises, why it's often better to finish your pasta in with the sauce, and in Chinese food, it's a big reason why we basically always marinate before stir-frying. And I think this is why spaghetti often isn't very good in the context of a lot of Asian soups. Because within the greater noodle universe, spaghetti is one of the firmest, driest noodles that you can get. I mean, like, egg-only, low-moisture, durum wheat. Sort of akin to Cantonese wonton noodles, the stuff's basically designed from the ground up to be hearty as hell. But unlike Cantonese wonton noodles, they're also pretty thick. So in a soup, the flavor entrance quality is not exactly rue. But luckily, I think we might have just stumbled upon a solution. You see, browsing our increasingly problematically sized collection of old Chinese cookbooks. In this 1989 Yang Zhou one, there's a dish called Wei Mian or braised noodles. Now, this dish isn't exactly a known or anything, but you don't really see it around too, too much anymore. And the noodle cooking technique is this ever so slight twist. Basically, it uses a firmer noodle, partially boils it to what's more or less al dente by any other name. But unlike pasta, then shocks with cool water to stop the cooking and rinse off some of the starch, and finally boils the noodle till cooked inside of the soup. And with this technique, the flavor enters, even with spaghetti. So while today we'll just be covering this old school dish, definitely do keep this technique in mind for whenever you've just gotta reach for that spaghetti. So then, let's get started here at first with said soup. So we'll be using a base of 10 grams of dried shrimp here, and then soaking that with 20 grams of Shaoxing wine and setting that aside. Next, grab about 30 grams worth of scallions, cut them into about inch long sections, separating out the whites and greens. And then, honestly, that's it for the soup prep. To make it then, just swirl in a tablespoon half of lard to a wok or pot, and fry those scallion whites over a medium low flame. Once they're starting to get a bit golden brown, then add in the greens. Continue to slowly fry those until the greens deepen in color and ever so slightly crispen up. Then just remove solely the greens, but no need to be too, too obsessive. Then to the remaining whites, add in the soaked shrimp together with the wine and swap your flame up a touch to medium. Fry that until the wine's basically reduced away and the oil's gotten clear again, about three minutes then hit it with two cups of hot boiled water from the kettle. That said, at this point, in the interest of cultural fidelity and also not pissing off any Jiangzhou people out there, we should probably note that in Yangzhou, the dominant way that you see wei mian is served bai tang. That is, a white soy sauceless soup. But today we went hong tang, that is red soup, soy sauce included. Basically just because that's the way we personally like it. Further, the very most classic braised noodle out there is probably this dish, which uses a fish stock and shredded fish, which we'll link a couple recipes for in the pinned comment below. Either way, for us today, we'll just toss in a quarter teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon MSG, one teaspoon of sugar, together with a tablespoon half of soy sauce. Quick stir, heat off, soup base ready. And for us, we're transferring this thing to a serving pot mostly for YouTube thumbnail purposes, but definitely do feel free to dish minimize and keep this all in one. So soup base in hand, now we can handle our noodles. Nothing crazy, pot of boiling water, 100 grams of dried spaghetti, 
and cook that until it just starts to reach al dente, which was, for this bag, on this stove, about five minutes for us. Then strain and give that a good rinse. Again, not just a shock, but also to avoid clouding the soup. Then just bring your soup base up to a boil, then toss in your now par-cooked spaghetti. Once back up to a boil, swap your flame down to medium-low and then just let that braise. If you want it to keep a bit of a bite, braise it for about four to five minutes. Or if you're cool with softer and more roux eight to 10. Then just toss back on the crispy scallion, plus a couple of fresh ones for the sake of good looking. And with that, your spaghetti noodle soup is done. So in Jiangzhou, they actually have a specific type of noodles that's used for Wei Mian. Uh, they are fresh noodles that are usually thicker so that it can sustain longer cooking time. So in this context, pasta or spaghetti is actually pretty good for this application. But of course, you can use whatever Chinese or Asian types of noodle that you want. But if they are thinner, just remember to cut the cooking time slightly. So right, uh, as always, recipes in the description box. Thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.